Hello, I am Chandu Nair handling the course on marketing management. We are now going to talk about a very important topic, sales management. This is something most marketing professionals and sales professionals are involved in day in and day out, the activity of actually making sales happen. So it's very vital to understand what exactly does sales management entail. And let's take a look at what this chapter covers. At the end of this chapter, we will be able to understand a little better about the meaning and concept of sales management, particularly the difference between sales and marketing, what the sales management process is all about, designing and managing the sales force, and finally, take a look at some emerging trends in sales management. Let's begin. First and foremost, it's vital for us to again have a look at what is sales and what is marketing and look at it from traditional marketing theory. First and foremost, in the case of sales, the emphasis is finally on the product because you have a product or service in hand which you have to make money off of and that's what the focus is. In marketing, the emphasis is on the consumer and the needs and wants and desires of the consumer. In the case of the sales, of sales, there is a product which the company has made and now the objective is to sell it. In the case of marketing, as you have seen time and again, there is an attempt to determine consumer needs and figure out what offering can satisfy those needs and wants. In the case of sales, very clearly management is sales volume and value oriented. In the case of marketing, management is more profit oriented. Again, in the case of sales, the planning is more short term oriented and it is typically in terms of today, today's markets, today's context. Marketing, the planning is more long term oriented and it's not just in terms of today but also in terms of newer products and in terms of tomorrow's and emerging markets. In the case of sales, there is a view of business as a goods producing process. Whereas in the case of marketing, business is essentially seen as a needs and consumer satisfying process. In the case of sales, it's cost which determines price. In the case of marketing, we get inputs from the customer which helps determines price and the price then determines cost. And there are several examples for us to understand that this really happens in real life as well. Finally, in selling, customer is seen as the last link. Whereas, in marketing, customer is seen as being the very purpose of the business. So, as you can make out, there are some very clear and glaring differences and there are some subtle and not so glaring differences. But it is very important to see that sales has a very critical role because finally at the end of the day, the customer, the company has to make money off of the products that it has and it is the sales management process that really starts delivering that kind of revenues for the company. So a typical sales process has these steps. This first step is of prospecting, which is figuring out who is out there as the target market, as target customers, figuring out who are prospects for what I have to offer. The second then is to determine who to target. There may be a bunch of prospects as the old story goes. All those with bare feet might be potential targets for I mean, potential customers for footwear, but which of them have the ability to pay which of them is interested in having footwear would determine who you want to target for different kinds of footwear. Third thing is then to decide a pre-approach. What kind of you know needs do they have? What kind of wants do they have? How exactly can those be satisfied? Understand all that. And the fourth step is then communicating and figuring out what approach to make to each of them. Then the fifth point is to actually make a presentation in some form to them, in some cases even do a demo depending on the nature of the product. For example, if it's a, a consumer durable like a washing machine, it may be necessary for you to demo that product. Eureka Forbes is seen as a company which demos its water purification and air purification products in consumer homes so that the customer gets a real first hand feel of what exactly is, or is really involved in that product. Then comes a very important stage. Customers typically tend to have objections and handling objections is part of a sales professional's key uh, abilities, handling, managing and overcoming those objections. Finally, the salesperson closes the sale and then thereafter there is the follow up and maintenance because a satisfied customer can give you more leads and more prospects. 
and in many cases a satisfied customer also tends to be a customer for other products and offerings that you might have. So this is the typical sales process. One of the key things therefore is to design the sales force required for your set of products or for a set for a set of offering service offerings that you might have. So for that you must figure out what exactly are your objectives and what exactly is the strategy for which you require that sales force. As we have seen there are these various kinds of tasks that sales force people so let's say the typical salesperson has we have already seen a set of steps out there which is prospecting, targeting, and communicating and closing the sale. But apart from that a salesperson also needs to play other roles like information gathering, allocating tasks and managing the whole process. So you know it is vital to know what tasks are there and how exactly those tasks can be fulfilled. Another important aspect to see is the structure of the sales force. There are different ways one can set up a sales force for your own organization. You can have people directly employed by the company. You can have people who are contractually employed by the company on a commission basis, on a variable basis and so on and so forth. Or you can leverage even the sales force that your dealers and distributors have. So all kinds of permutations and combinations are possible and companies tend to typically use a mix many times depending on a nature of the product and the target audience that they are looking at. The other big challenge while you are designing the Salesforce structure is to see how many people are required, how big should the team be, how do should they be geographically located and dispersed and so on and so forth. Typically this is done based on who you want to target, how you want to target them, the amount of workload that is involved and so on and so forth. So the process typically is customers are divided into different segments, grouped into size classes. There is also a desirable call frequency. How often do you touch a customer, call upon a customer? Is it the same for say a consumer durable like a washing machine as compared to say selling a huge, you know, selling some power related equipment or a backhoe loader? You know, so it could be very different for different customers because if you talk to customers too often in some of these cases, they may actually get quite irritated by your constant, uh, you know, hounding them. So the number of accounts also in each size and in each size class is multiplied by the corresponding call frequency. The number of accounts means in the case of household products like consumer durables, the accounts may be relatively you know somebody buys a washing machine once he is unlikely to buy a washing machine again. And some, whereas you look at something like large power equipment or huge uh, fact I mean a huge new power plant may require different kinds of equipment. So the account size could be huge that particular company that power plant may be a huge account. And there could be not just one person but several people handling that account because it is so huge. The number of calls a salesperson can make per year is also determined. In the case of pharmaceuticals, there is a requirement for the salesperson to make calls to dealers, to make calls to you know maybe doctors and maybe calls to other kinds of institutional buyers. Now depending on the nature and frequency of buying, ordering and so on and so forth, the number of calls that the salesperson makes, the geography depends on all this as also the geography that he has been allocated and the nature of the product, how often that kind of product might be bought. So totally based on all this, the call frequency, the nature of product, the size of the account and the geographical uh, you know, territory that has been assigned and the nature of the product of course, the number of sales representatives can be determined. Now this can also be subject to change because as the company grows, the complexity grows, the, the diversity and range of products grows, the salesperson's requirement might also be modified accordingly. A big aspect here always is how do you compensate sales folks because many times many people believe that sales people are a different breed uh, or a different animal altogether compared to many other folks within a company. There are typically four components. One is a fixed component which is a salary kind of thing. Second is a variable amount which is performance based based on sales collections, you know, maybe sometimes profit, it depends on the kind of company, it depends on the nature of the business, it depends on the quality and caliber of the salesperson. But a variable commission is very common, incentive commission. Third thing is kind of expense allowances because he has to travel here and there. Sometimes he may have to entertain customers too. 
And a fourth thing, there could be other kinds of benefits that are also given to the sales folks. It could be in the form of annual junkets or annual, uh, you know, conferences and things like that. There could be other kinds of benefits. It could be terminal benefits to which other employees too may be eligible for. So there are various, typically the various ways by which companies try to compensate them. In fact, some uh, newer age companies in say the information technology business or other kinds of business have other kinds of uh, employee compensation. For example, senior level uh, folks in certain functions including marketing and sales may even get equity or equity options. So this is the issue of compensation is quite a critical issue, but typically for most salespeople, this is the way it is structured.